Hi, welcome back to WebRTC Tips by WebRTC Ventures. I'm Aaron Syme. I'm the CEO and founder at WebRTC Ventures. We are custom designers and developers of live video applications for web and mobile working in a wide variety of industries. Here to help you build your live video application. You can learn more about us at webrtc.ventures. And today I'm going to bring you uh, a little more uh, tips and information from our team of expert WebRTC developers. Today what I want to talk to you about are SFUs and MCUs. These acronyms are terms you'll commonly hear in WebRTC application architecture. And I just want to quickly describe the differences between them, why you might use them in your application, some of the benefits that they offer over WebRTC sort of out of the box, sort of default peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC. So in WebRTC, one of the common things that you hear people talk about is scaling challenges. And this is one area that SFUs and MCUs can definitely help with. So on the left here, we have a standard WebRTC connection sort of by the book, the by the standard, a one-to-one peer-to-peer connection where your web, your web server is used to help establish a video call between two participants. But once that call has been established, then those two users have a peer-to-peer a -peer connection between them exchanging all of the video, audio, and data. And that peer-to-peer -peer connection is no longer going through your web server itself. So this this peer-to-peer -peer topology works great for one-on-one -on -one calls. Uh, it has great security benefits to it and performance benefits in that that traffic's not going through your server and you don't need any sort of intermediary media, media server to happen, uh, to make that happen. It's working directly between the browsers of those two users. Now there are some other things around stun and turn servers that still need to be in place in order to establish that peer-to-peer -peer connection. If you're not familiar with stun and turn, we have other WebRTC tips videos about that. For simplicity though, that's kind of typically left out of these diagrams showing the peer-to-peer -peer connection because once it's established, it is a peer-to-peer -peer connection between those two users and it's really efficient. But if you're trying to scale to group conference calls, you end up in a mesh topology like shown here on the right, where now the number of connections is going up exponentially because every single user needs to have a peer-to-peer -peer connection with every other user in that group video chat. So this can become very problematic very quickly, right? If you're trying to do a large video group chat of more than 10 people, for example, uh, you will run into problems pretty quickly with this. Or if you're trying to use WebRTC in its sort of pure form in a, in a larger broadcast or webinar scenario, you'll certainly run into this problem as well if you're trying to establish those peer-to-peer -peer connections between every user. So scaling WebRTC is one of those things that people talk about pretty quickly because it's important in a lot of WebRTC use cases, even if you're just trying to do a group video chat, how do we scale it? Uh, and then media servers become the most common way to uh, talk about scaling from that one-to-one -to, -one to a group video chat call. And they offer some other benefits as well. And the most common uh, things that we talk about when we talk about those media servers are are we going to use an MCU, a multi-point control unit, or a multi-point uh, conferencing unit? Or are we going to use an SFU, a selective forwarding unit? So in this, in this WebRTC tip, I'm just going to quickly describe the differences between those so that you have that in mind uh, when you're thinking about your WebRTC application architecture. So an MCU, what it's doing is a, is a mixer, basically. It's taking the video and audio streams uh, from each user, mixing them together, in a central server so that each participant only has one set of streams to deal with regardless of the number of participants in the call. In SFU, a selective forwarding unit, still has the benefit of each participant only connecting to a single media server instead of trying to connect separately peer-to-peer -peer with every user in that uh, group video chat call, for example. Uh, so it has that benefit. It's not a full mesh, mesh topology. It doesn't have the complexity of that. But the users do still get individuals, end up getting individual streams from each participant, which gives them some additional control. So 
And regardless whether you're using an MCE or an SAFU, you might use this for scaling purposes. You might also use it because you're trying to add some other features to your system that you can't do in a pure peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC call. For example, you might be trying to build in recording of the calls, or you might be able to, uh, you might be trying to build in some sort of broadcasting this call out to a larger audience to view it, like in a webinar scenario. Or you might want to interface to other services uh, for things like uh, transcription of what's being discussed in the call, for example. So any features that you want to add like that are very difficult to do in a pure peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC scenario because once your web application is setting up that peer-to-peer -peer call between two users, the content of that call is moved off of your web server. You really don't have uh, access to those streams in the, in the same sort of way. So if you have features that need that require you to have access to those streams like recording or broadcasting, then you really need a media server of some kind. You might look at either an MCU architecture or an SFU architecture depending on your needs. So let's talk a little bit more about the differences between those. So in an MCU, a multi-point control unit, as I described and as is shown in this diagram, you have a central server that everyone connects to in the call. So instead of these five Users in this diagram all having a mesh network of peer-to-peer -peer connections between each other. Each of them only connects to the MCU, and they, uh, the MCU then does some additional processing to take those five video streams, for example, and composite them together into a single video stream, which it then sends out to everybody else. So each user who is connected to the MCU is sending up one set of audio and video to the MCU and receiving back from the MCU one set of audio and video, which is the combined audio and video of all other participants. So this has pros and cons. Uh, a big pro of this from that user's perspective is that they've just got that one set of streams up and down to deal with. So it can really help those users who are on uh, lower capability devices, maybe a mobile device, for example, without as much processing power, they don't have as many streams from those different users that they have to deal with. The bandwidth in general of this solution is much more predictable because every user who connects is just going to have one set of streams going up and down instead of an exponential increase in the number of streams being exchanged as the number of participants call. So it has more predictable bandwidth usage. It's a little less uh, uh, processor intensive on each user individually, which those things are nice. However, that processing power has to be done somewhere. It's basically done on the MCU in order to mix those streams together to create that layout of the video and then push that out to everybody. So that introduces a little bit of latency, more uh, maybe not noticeable, but still more latency than an SFU would have. Uh, it also requires a lot of processing power on the MCU side. So you may not have to scale as much or be as worried about network bandwidth, but you're going to be really concerned about the processing power on the MCU itself and maybe need more MCUs in your cluster in order to handle your application as it scales to a large amount. But that's the basics of what an MCU does. Now an SFU, a selective forwarding unit, looks a little bit different here. When you see in the diagram, each user is still only connected to that individual media server instead of running a full mesh network of peer-to-peer -peer connections to all the users, so that's good. And they're still only sending one set of video and audio upstream up to that media server. But now the SFU is still sending them an individual stream back to them for each participant in the call. So in this example, I have five people in the call, which means that each one of them is going to send up their audio and video, and they're going to receive back four streams, for, for, you know, each one each for the other four participants in this call. So uh, that's helpful, uh, but it has pros and cons as well. So one of the pros of this is that uh, the individual user, each individual user in the call, could still have uh, control over what they do with those individual video streams, for example. So, so in an MCU topology, the MCU determines what is the video layout. Are we all going to be, uh, you know, Brady Bunch with with equal size squares of, of video, or are we going to say this person is the, is the presenter and make their video larger with everybody else smaller uh, video profiles next to it? 
In an MCU, the MCU decides that, and it sends that one layout to everybody, typically. In an SFU, because we're receiving each stream still individually from each user, we have the possibility of changing the layout that we see in our version of that group chat tool. If I want to click on and maximize one person's video or the screen share video or something like that, but other users can change their own layout and the way they view things. So if that type of individual user preferences for layout is important to you, then you definitely need an SFU instead of an MCU, for example. Another uh, interesting thing uh, these days, there's uh, talk about insertable streams and end-to-end -end encryption in WebRTC, doing true end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, WebRTC, the peer connections themselves are always encrypted, but when you have a media server in the middle like this, the media server and MCU especially because it's doing uh, composite layouts of that video has to have access to those individual video streams, maybe transcodes them, that sort of thing, which means that even though the video is encrypted in transit between each user and the MCU, the MCU is still seeing unencrypted video. So if it's important to you to have truly end-to-end -end encrypted video where it's encrypted for a given user and it is not decrypted until it gets to the, the other participant in the call and even the media server in the middle can't see what that video is. If that is important to you in your application, then you need an SFU instead of an MCU because an SFU opens up that possibility because it's not trying to manipulate, it doesn't have to at least manipulate the individual video streams so you can encrypt them on a client and then send that encrypted video stream all the way to the other clients connected to the SFU without the SFU ever needing to decrypt that video stream. So end-to-end -end encryption requires an SFU. Uh, SFU also has lower CPU requirements than an MCU, so you, so you may be able to use fewer cloud instances of your media server in an SFU scenario than an MCU, for example, because the, M uh, because the SFU requires lower CPU usage. Uh, on the other hand, the bandwidth going through your call in general is going to be more variable based on the number of users because we are still sending individual streams for each participant in the call. Even though it's still not as complicated as a, as a mesh network topology, we are still sending out a lot of streams of data. Uh, so that's something to consider as well. But this tends to be the most common option that you see in new WebRTC implementations now because of the different powers uh, that it give, gives you. So uh, why not both though, right? They both have MCUs and SFUs have pros and cons to them. So why not both? Uh, so this is an interesting concept. Uh, I was introduced to this by Lorenzo Miniero of Meet Echo and also founder of the Janus Media Server at the uh, IIT, uh, Illinois Institute of Tech, Real-Time Communications Conference in 2020. He's a regular speaker there, and in 2020 he spoke on the topic of can SFUs and MCUs be friends? And you can find that full presentation on YouTube uh, from IIT. And this diagram just kind of is a representation of, of uh, some ideas that he talked about in that. Scenarios where you might want to consider using both an SFU and an MCU in your application, depending on your use case. So this is kind of my representation of, of his ideas there, that you might want to, for example, have a group video chat using an SFU for the group video chat between, say, these five participants in the way I've drawn it here but then also have the SFU send those streams out to an MCU so that the MCU can do things that are better suited to an MCU than an SFU. For example, maybe you use that MCU as a gateway out to do a recording or broadcasting of uh, that, uh, that, that video call, right? So imagine a, a use case, for example, where these five people are, uh, they're having a group video chat between them and they want that video chat between them to be completely real time using WebRTC, but then there are maybe thousands of other people who are going to watch the five of them talk. And those thousands of other viewers maybe could be over HLS or a broadcasting stream with some latency and delay into it. Maybe that doesn't matter because they're just watching these five people talk, sort of like a, a, uh, you know, a panel discussion on a TV show, for example, right? Uh, so you could use the MCU 
to take those individual st video streams from the five users in that panel discussion, put them together into a composite layout if you want to, send it out for recording, send it out to a broadcasting service or a CDN, or maybe use that to uh, that MCU to handle different mobile devices that connect to it, because that's something that an MCU can do well to send different types of uh, a composite layout depending on the device that's connecting to it, whether it's a desktop browser or a mobile phone, for example, or maybe sending uh, just the audio of that out to a traditional telephony network to a conference call or something like that, or you know any purpose that you might use a SIP gateway for. So, so there might be scenarios too where, where you don't have to think SFU or MCU, uh, but maybe both. And so I encourage you also to check out uh, Lorenzo's talk on that. So that's a little overview for you of the difference between SFUs and MCUs, why we talk about that in WebRTC application architecture so much, why it's really important in the choice of the media server that you use. Some media servers can handle both, depending on your use case. Others are more focused on one. Um, and uh, so it's something that you need to think about at the beginning of your application. What are the features that you're going to want? Even if these are features that maybe you don't want on day one of your application in the initial beta of it, but you will need uh, longer down the road, you might want to consider those features up front just so that you're making sure to choose a media server that accommodates the use case you have, the features that you need. So if you're ready to have an architectural conversation like that about your live video applications, you can contact us, us at webrtc.ventures. We'd love to talk to you. We have a lot of development experts in our team who do this for clients all the time in a wide variety of use cases. We're, we would love to talk to you about taking your video application live. So thanks for checking out this edition of WebRTC Tips from WebRTC Ventures. Make sure to follow us on YouTube and on Twitter for more tips like this. Thanks a lot for joining us today.